can overcome this, bro. You don't have to smoke a cigarette. You don't got to get high. You right. can overcome it. Right. All right, give me 1 Peter 2 and 21. Because the Most High God left us here an example. Not only the prophets, but his son, Jesus the Christ, which lived a perfect life. Amen. All right, understand that. You said nobody's perfect. The Bible says contrary. All right, read that. 1 Peter 2 and 21. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. Uh -huh. For even here unto ye are called, because Christ also suffered for us. So Christ did what? He suffered for us. You think you suffered. You didn't go through what Christ went through. True. You understand that, right? All right, read on. Leaving us an example. Leaving us a what? An example. Leaving us an example. Read. That ye should follow. That ye should what? Follow. That ye shall follow. Did Christ keep the law while he was on earth? Yes, he did. He did. So, for example, would we walk around seeing Christ smoking a cigarette? No, because no, he understood not to defile his temple. Okay. You understand that? A, a, a glass of wine, though. Yeah, give me that Matthew 9, 11 and 19. Of course. Of course. Now, when you drink wine, is that a sin? I mean... It, yes or no? It, it, it defiles the joke. No, 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 no. We got to get some understanding on that. Give me one sec. Read this. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man glutton and a wine bibber. So just because Christ drunk wine does not mean he was a wino out in the streets. Give me Ecclesiastes 10 and 9. You can drink, brother, it's fine. That's not a sin. All right, that's why we're here, to educate our people, to mind. teach our people the truth according to the Bible. All right, watch this. Give me that. Verse 19, a feast is made for laughter, and wine make it merry. And what? Wine make it merry. So understand. The most I got gave was wine. It's okay to drink, brother. It's if you get drunk. You understand that, right? Okay. All right. Now, there's something else that you said. Something else that you said earlier. Ebo, right? Yeah. You said you did your research to find out that you were from the, an Ebo, right? Yeah. All right. That's what West Coast South Africa, right? Africa, yeah. Right, right, right. Give me the book of Isaiah 11 and 10. Watch this. Watch this, bro. Now, it just so happens that those people that you research, those are the Israelites according to the Bible. All right, watch this. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 10. I want you to listen real close, all right? Read that. 11 and 10. Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 10. And Start at 11. And 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Of his what? His people. So you have to understand, the Most High God... He's not the God of the whole earth, right? He's not the God of every nation, kindred, and tongue. He's only the God of the Israelites. First and foremost, that's what you got to understand, brother. Read on. Which shall be left from Assyria uh -huh. and from Egypt. And from what? Egypt. Egypt. Where, where is that at? What landmass is that at? Africa. Africa. Exactly, read. And from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath. And from the islands of the sea. And from the islands of the sea. Showing you what? Our people are scattered everywhere. Just like you call yourself what? An American, African American, right? Over there, they call themselves Igbo or Ashanti, which means people of Ashan, which are actually the people of the Bible who are the Israelites. Right. You understand that, right? So, give me Romans 8 and 16. Watch this. Give me Romans chapter 8, verse 16. All right? You're going to have a choice to make today. All right? Read what you got. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Read that. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. Uh -huh. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. So when the Bible says the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit, it's talking about the words of God bearing witness with the Spirit. When you hear these words, it brings uh, your history back into remembrance. How did our forefathers get over here on, to this Slave world? Slave ships, right? Is that in the Bible? You say no? We don't. You say it is. Say, uh, brother, how do we get over here to America? Huh? What method of transportation? How do we get to America? What method of transportation? You say slave ships, slave ships. That's how we got here, slave ships. He says it's not in the Bible. She says it is in the Bible. Let's find out. All right, give me that. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. 
All right. According to the scriptures, Egypt means what? Bondage. That's what it means. It means slavery or captivity. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Read. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee. So the Bible just said, the Most High God will bring the children of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, into slavery with what? Ships. With ships. So you already understand that we came over here on cargo slave ships, right? Now, where did we just read that? Hold up the book. That's the Bible. You understand that, right? Now, go back to Romans 8 and 16. Romans 8 and 16. Read what you got. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So when you hear the curses of this Bible, resonate with you, bro. Understand that you just said out of your own mouth that we got over here by cargo slave ships. Did right. we not just read that out of the Bible? So that means what? No, that means what about you? Read it again. Listen close, all right? Watch this. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit. So the words of God bear witness with our spirit. So when we read this, we understand that the Bible is true. The things that were prophesied aforetime have came to pass. Right. And we are the living witnesses or the examples of those prophecies. Right. Read it again. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That we are what? The children of God. That means, brother, you are a child of God. That's right. You are an Israelite according to the Bible. Right. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 37. Right. That Igbo, that was a byword placed upon you. That is not your true heritage. You just stated out of your own mouth. Our people, the Igbos, the Ashanti, they came from where? Jerusalem. Exactly. They were exiled to the west coast of Africa. Right. And the remnant will be delivered in that day. That's Read what right. you got. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 37. Uh-huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations. Among what? All nations. A proverb, a byword is what? An Igbo, an African American, an Hispanic, a Native American. That was prophesied. Now, sis, you answered it correctly. How did you know that that was in the Bible? How did you know? I can't hear you. Come on, come on. I can't hear you. I read. You read it? Okay. All praise. All praise. So, what is your nationality according to the Bible, sis? Yo, guess me. Can you do it around me one and one? Now, we read in the Bible what? That the slave ships happen to rich people. Do you know? No. Let's find out. Let's find out. So, now we're about to realize that that curse only pertained to one nation of people. Right. All right, read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter one and verse one. Uh -huh. These be the word which Moses spake unto all Israel. Read it again. Pay attention, sis. Read it again. These be the word which Moses spake unto all Israel. Unto all who? Israel. Unto all who? Israel. So Deuteronomy was written to which people, sis? So, go back to Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Watch this. Read what you got. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord shall bring the Israelites into Egypt, which is captivity again, with what? With ships. So, sis, what is your nationality according to the Bible? Israel. Exactly. Exactly. So, can we go back to 1 Corinthians 3.16? So guess what? There was a law. You know what? Give me Exodus 24.7. Watch this. Exodus 24.7. Now, when you're an Israelite, you don't live like everybody else. You have to understand that thing. What, what's the difference between an Israelite and an Asian? One people have a set of laws which makes them holy, and the other, they're Gentiles. They do whatever they want to do. Watch this. Read what you got. Exodus. Chapter 24 and verse 7. And he took a book, the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. So this is when Moses took a book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. In the audience were who? The Israelites. Read. And they said all that the people, sorry. And said all that the people, and they said all that the Lord had said we will do. So the Bible says, the Israelites, we agree. Whatever God said to do, 
we would do it. Y'all understand that, right? So, 2 Timothy 3, 16. Listen close, listen close. Read that. Next page. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. That's it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Read it again. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. So, do y'all remember that covenant that the Israelites made with Moses? Said that everything that God said we will do. You remember that? Do you remember, sis? All right, read it again. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God. So the Bible just said all of the scripture was given by who? God. God, right? Give me 1 Timothy, 1 Corinthians 3.16. 1 Corinthians 3.16. All right? So you got a choice. You got a choice today. You're going to either choose righteousness or you're going to choose death. It's that simple. That's how the most high rules. Because if he made an agreement with you, he's not going to renew. He's not going to renege. Actually, what's that? Ecclesiastes 3 and 14. He's not going to renege. Whatever the Most High God sets up, it lasts forever. Even until this day. Even though your forefathers made that agreement, guess what? You are the offspring of your forefathers. All right, read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 16. 14. 14. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. How long? Forever. So that covenant that he made with the Israelites is how long? Forever. Forever. All right, go back to 1 Corinthians 3.16. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that, the, that ye are the temple of God. So God is telling you through the, uh, the apostle Paul, brother, don't you know that your body is the temple of God? That's what he's saying to you. Read. Know ye not that the, ye are the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So there's something serious, bro. Now guess what? If you want to take that lightly, this is what's coming to you. Read on. If any man defile his temple. It said if any man defile his temple. A cigarette, brother, what is that doing to your temple? It's defiling you. Read. If any man divide, defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Him shall what? Him shall God destroy. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 30 and 15. So I'm going to put pressure on you right now today. You have a choice. You can choose good, life and good, or death and evil. You just realize what? That you are Israelite. That means you are the greatest people on the face of the earth. Right. Understand that they first and foremost. Yeah. Or you can continue in sin and get what? Destroyed. Thus saith the Lord. You understand that, don't you? Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15. Uh -huh. See, I have set before thee this day life and good. So the Most High God has set before you this day life and good, read. And death and evil. And death and evil. So, bro, you literally have a choice to make today. It's either you put down a cigarette and choose righteousness or what? Or you continue to smoke and be destroyed. What's your decision going to be, brother? Oh man, I love my mom with you. Give me Psalms 119 and 60. What's your decision going to be? It's that simple, but this ain't the Christian church. We're not going to sugarcoat it. We're not going to clap sing with you. No, we're going to tell you the truth. If you don't repent, you will die. That's what we're going to teach. Because that's what the Bible says. You understand that? Watch this. This is one of your forefathers. Pay attention. Read. Psalms 119 and verse 60. I made haste and dis delay not. To keep thy commandments. Alright, this is King David. He said that he made haste and delayed not. When you do something in haste, what does that mean? Hurry up. Hurry up. Okay, you understand the scriptures. Read it again. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. To do what? To keep thy commandments. So brother, if our forefather David, King David understood that, why can't you comprehend it? He said, hey, I understand the judgments. Give me Psalms 119, 120. I understand the judgments that are coming. Understand, the longer you hold that cigarette in your hand, guess what? Your, your, the days on your life, just counting away. When you walk away from me, you can hit by a bus. You can put to death seconds from now. You can, what? Now, what does that do? What did that just do? What, what was that? What was that about? I just showed you love. I appreciate it. How do you show God love? Pray. Uh, they pray, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah. do the right thing. You said do the right thing? Uh-huh. The right thing. What's the right thing to by do? By people. By people. What's the right thing to do according to the scriptures? 
walk like Jesus. You said walk like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 6, 17. Like now you said do the right thing. All right, let's go to the scriptures to find out what the right thing is. Now, my brother, after we show you what the right thing is, are you going to do it? Yes or no? I can't say. I, brother. It's kind of hard. Brother, you're a reckless brother. You're a reckless brother. I it. Read it real quick. I'm going to move on to the next because you're reckless, bro. Read on. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and wait. verse 16. 17. 17. He shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord. So the Bible said you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord. Read. And his testimony and his statutes which he had commanded thee. Read on. And thou shalt do that which is right. And thou shalt do what? That which is right. So keeping the commandments of God, that's what's right. That's right. Now the fact, what are you going to do now? Are you going to do it? Are you going to keep his commandments? Are you going to follow what the scripture says and put the cigarette down? But I'm saying. No, 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 no. No, no, I ain't checking you out. It's either you're going to keep the commandments or not. Go ahead, brother. All right, about a cigarette. What'd you say? All that about a cigarette. Yeah. With all this shit going on in the world. Right, you're going to be put to death with everybody else, yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen to you. That's right. Give me Luke 13 and 3. You don't get it. I get it. You don't get it, brother. No, you don't. But it's, no, you don't. It, it, because you just add. Sin is sin, brother. Yeah. Exactly. Give me Matthew 5 and 48, actually. Matthew exactly. 5 and 48. Now, you without seeing cat first on. I didn't say. I didn't, give me Titus 3 and 3. Give me Titus 3 and 3. Because this brother doesn't understand it. You think you think that I'm better than No, I'm not out here saying that I'm better than you. I'm trying to get you to be where I'm at, brother. Understand that. Read the scripture. Titus 3 and 3. Titus 3 and 3. Read what you got. Chapter 3 and verse 3. For we ourselves were, were sometimes foolish. So, brother, understand, brother. A lot of us used to smoke. A lot of us used to sell drugs. Some of us killed people. Read it again. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, uh -huh. disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts. Serving diverse lusts. That could go into anything, brother. Going into being a whoremonger. Going into the fact where you can't stop getting high. You can't put the cigarette down. Brother, we were on that side before. We ain't trying to say that I'm bad. Don't even go there because that's not the case. You're trying to make excuses, brother. Read it. Read it again. Listen to the Bible. Read it again. Titus 3 and verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Read. But after the kindness and love of, our, of God, our Savior, towards man appeared. But guess what? The Most High God had mercy. And we were chosen out of the world to do what? To be reformed. Right. To repent. Right. right. That's why we out here. Right. Give me that in Matthew 4, 17. You know, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven. Give me that. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. So brother, once we heard the call, once we were chosen, what do we do? We built ourselves up to come to what? To keep calling men. We're doing the same works as John the Baptist right. and Jesus the Christ. We are teaching and spreading the gospel of what? Of repentance. And that you are an Israelite. That's what we're teaching you, brother. Read that. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So when we saw Christ's example, guess what? We followed it. And we did not make an excuse. We looked at Christ's example. We said, you know what? Hey, that's what Christ did. He had mercy. He had love, kindness. He kept the law. Guess what? We're going to do the same. Right, right. And it's up to you to make your decision. Right. Go ahead. Now, I said that to say, a cigarette, right? What you said? Man, you've been demon on him, but you don't know what's going on with him. For real. I might have just left a nigga around the corner dead. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's bigger than that. No, it's not. The, 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 no, it's, listen, how do you get to heaven? Listen, how do you get to heaven? To get to me. Speak to me as a man. I am speaking to you as a man. No, you want me to say, you hey, it's look, okay. Look, no, hey, it's no, okay. No, 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 I'm speaking as God commanded us to speak. Give me Isaiah 58 1. I ain't listening to all of that. I'm not listening to all of that. Because you want to be baby. No, God is raising men. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud. Spear 
fear not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. That's what God says to do, brother. Now you showing your sign. You showing that you the devil the Bible speaks of. Because when you hear God's laws, you say to hell with God's laws. That's what you showing right now, my brother. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.